Hey folks, Alan Manic the Hot Rod Hippie here. Today's video is next in our Behind the Build series. This one's about electric fans and controlling them. So this is the second electric fan video I'm doing. The last one I discussed mounting as well as shrouding and whether to run push or pull. In this one we're going to discuss controlling your fans. So you have a lot of options when it comes to controlling electric fans and maybe you're not quite sure what you should be doing. Well, I'm going to let you know what I think is the best options for controlling electric fans on your cooling system and what are some things you should avoid. So let's start off with the don'ts. First don't, in my opinion, is running the key hot fan. That means when you turn the key on, the fan kicks on. While yes, this will allow the fan to cool off the engine, it's going to create a couple of issues. Biggest one being, it's going to take longer for your car to warm up and get to proper operating temperature. EFI systems, carburetors, they want that engine to be at a certain operating temperature so that you can run efficiently and make the most power. That's part of the idea of having an electric fan is you have finer control over where that engine is running in its operating range of temperature. When you're running key hot, you're not getting that control there. From the moment you turn that key on to the moment you turn that key off, the fan's going to run. So it's not going to be allowing that engine to come up to operating temperature quickly and it's not really going to keep it into the proper operating range that it wants to be in. It's just going to run and that's all it's going to do. So you're going to have excess noise, overcooling situation. It's just not a good way to run your fan. So the second don't in my opinion is running a switch. Everybody thinks this is a really straightforward way to run a fan and it is. Obviously you flip a switch, the fan turns on, done. This would be nice that it would allow your engine to warm up without the fan running and then you could flip it on when you get to the temperature you need it at. But there's one major, major problem with this. And what is that? Well, quite simply, human error. We're all human. We screw up. It's just a fact of life. You're going to have a point somewhere down the road where you're going to forget to flip that switch. You're going to reach 230 degrees, starting to overheat, and, well, I forgot to flip that switch on. So now you flip it on. Now that fan has to work extra hard to cool things off. Maybe now you got to pull over, let the engine cool off with that fan running. It's just not a good scenario to be in. Most folks like this option because maybe they're sitting in traffic going to a car show and the engine's starting to run hot. They can force that fan on when they want to. And while that is nice, a proper cooling system should have no issue in that scenario. So you might have bigger issues going on than just whether or not your fan's kicking on when you think it should. A good control system will kick it on at the right temperature and off at the right temperature. So this shouldn't be an issue. If you're sitting in traffic, even with a good control system and you're starting to overheat, well, you might have a fan that's too small or you might have a cooling system that's not up to the cooling off your engine. So now I've said some don'ts. What do I think is the proper way to go about it? Well, that's having an independent control system. This means you need a controller that's going to kick that fan on automatically and kick it off automatically. This will allow your engine to come up to operating temperature quicker and also keep your engine in its proper operating range a lot better and a lot longer. The most common control system that I see people running is just one of the relay and thermal pickup setups. By that I mean you have a temperature probe that either goes into your radiator or into a water jacket and is basically just a switch itself. It's set so at a certain temperature that switch kicks on, the relay kicks on, and the fan kicks on. So that is a good way of doing it in that it will operate the fan at specific temperatures independent of your control so you don't have any input on it and you don't have to worry about it. I do have issue with these thermal pickup style ones where they don't have adjustable controls on them because those temperature senders change. By that I mean those temperature senders that switch, they switch at a certain temperature. They do this via resistance. The temperature pickup changes temperature and when it changes temperature the resistance in it changes. When the resistance gets to a different, certain set point it'll either flip the fan on or flip it off. And while that's great, resistance changes over time. It's just a fact of life that as electrical circuits wear, as they heat up, they cool down, as corrosion gets in there, those things are going to change and your resistance values are going to change. So while it may work perfectly the day you put it in, a year, two years down the road, it may not work properly anymore. Now it's coming on 5 degrees hotter or 10 degrees hotter or who knows, maybe it's not coming on at all. I've had a lot of these systems over the years where I've had to replace just the temperature pickup to get the thing to work properly again. 
or I've just had all kinds of little issues where it just wouldn't come on or off at the right temperature. One time it would come on at 190, one time it would come on at 180. It wasn't consistent, and I've seen that time and time again when you're talking about these systems that don't have adjustability. So what do I really like? Well, there's two controllers that I really like. Personally, I think you should have a controller that has adjustability. It has the ability to be changed when that temperature is coming on and when it's going off. The ones that I like are the Dakota Digital System and the Sentec Wiring System. I'm going to talk about them individually so you can see what I'm talking about with these two systems. So let's first talk about the Sentec Wiring Setup. With the Sentec Wiring Setup, you have a nice little box that has a built-in relay. That's great because you don't have all the additional wiring of a relay, and if you're not familiar with relays, this can really save you some headaches. The Sentec wiring setup just requires you to have a temperature pickup, the control power to it, and then it sends power to the fan. It's really a pretty simple system, and it's pretty easy to control. One of the nice things about the Sentec setup is it doesn't require an additional sender. By that I mean, if you're, say, running an electric gauge already, an auto meter, a VDO, Stuart Warner, you already have that sender in a water jacket, you don't need to add a second one for the Sentec unit. It can pick up off of the existing sender that you have, either you can wire all the way to it, or you can wire just to the backside of the gauge. So if you're wiring this up under a dash, it'll make for a much shorter distance you have to run to get that temperature signal to the Sentec unit. Next, let's talk about the Dakota Digital System. I really like Dakota Digital setup. The Dakota Digital is also really nice, like the Sentec, it can pick up off your existing sender unit, so you don't have to add on another sender for it if you're running electric senders. If you're running a Dakota Digital system, one of their VHX gauges, the digital gauges, you can piggyback off of the existing control box and it'll send signal to the new controller so it's got its temperature right there. The Dakota Digital is nice in that it can independently control two fans to come on at different temperatures, come on at the same temperature, or you can control that high and low setting at whatever temperatures you're trying to set it to. You can also control hysteris with the Dakota Digital System, which is the amount of time it'll stay off. So if your engine's right in a little temperature where it's gonna kick that fan on and off pretty often, the hysteris will allow it so that you're not having that fan cycle too much. It'll wait, say, 15 seconds before that fan can come back on, which is nice to keep the fan living a happy, long life. Both the Dakota Digital and the Sentec setup both allow for AC input. So if you have AC on your car, you can send an input signal from your AC system to these controllers so they'll kick the fan on when the AC is on as well. That's really great because if you're running down the road, run your AC, but maybe it's a little bit cooler day, your engine's not getting too hot, so your fan's not even coming on, your AC system still needs to cool off. That still is important to your AC so that it can pro properly function and output cool air. So the fan control with the AC input is a really nice feature of both of these controllers. Now, there are plenty other controller systems on the market. Different manufacturers have their own control systems. I'm just telling you the Sentec and the Dakota Digital are two that I have used with really good results in the past. A lot of the other ones from folks like Be Cool and such, I've had issues here and there with, so these are my go-to setups. That's why I'm recommending them to you. So, Really, when it comes to it, I'm just telling you, with electric fans, run a control system. Have some system in place that turns that fan on automatically and off automatically, so you don't have to mess with it. Human error is too big of an issue. I have seen cars melt down, get overheated because somebody forgot to turn the fan on, and it's just not a situation you want to be in. Burn up a nice crate motor, even if it's just an old junkyard motor, there's no reason to go risking it just because you were controlling it with a cheap switch. If nothing else, something really important to take away is run a relay on your fans. Fans pull nice strong loads. You need a relay to properly control that system. I'm not gonna get too in depth into this video with relays. That's a whole different electrical discussion that I'm going to get into sometime in the near future. So just look for a control system that has a relay to control your fan. The instructions will tell you how to wire it up with that system. And lastly, there is one more electric fan control system I didn't discuss. Depending on what EFI system you're running, they can often control electric fans for you. This is really nice because why add on extra sensors? Why have to wire in additional inputs and outputs when your EFI system may have all of that right there and ready to go for you? Things like an LS engine, they already have all that information in the ECM, it just needs to be wired in with a nice relay and wired properly. 
If you're ordering a wiring harness for like an LS engine, you can talk to the people making your wiring harness and they can add in fan wiring for you. It does need to be tuned into the ECM, your on and off temperatures, but most folks can take care of this for you. Tuners, the shops you're sending your ECM off to, they can take care of that. Alright folks, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, drop it a like, it really helps me out. If you want to check out my previous electric fan discussion, that card right over there will let you get over to that and you can check it out. Let me know in the comments down below, what control system are you running? Are you running a switch? Are you running a key and maybe you're rethinking it? Are you running a Dakota Digital and you really like it? Do you hate it? Let me know in the comments down below. You can go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the near future. Thanks for coming around folks, have a good day.